I'm here with Steve Dale, who work with IDA to develop their community of practice platform, which we're thinking of using. Uh, can you tell us just a bit about what that platform does? Um, well, okay, I mean, we try to keep it as a sort of simple as possible for people to sort of, uh, first of all, join. Um, it's actually got a range of social media tools on it, so, um, I mean, if you're into these sort of things, it's got things like blogs, forums, wikis, um, a document library, uh, tagging for finding content easily, uh, personal profiles, a way of actually finding experts. So all of the sort of standard things that form part of a sort of social media platform. And, and you call it communities of practice. And what, what is a community of practice? Um, well, actually, the, the, I, I try not to get too hung up on uh, actual definitions, as in uh, Tim Wenger's definitions or wiki definitions. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it, it's a group of people that actually share a common purpose or a common interest that, that are willing to collaborate together to share information and to learn, uh, well, to learn something about which they, they didn't know before. So the group probably watching this will be a group of people from Children's Trusts who are looking at how they can involve young people. They, they may be meeting for the first time today. What's this tool got to offer them as they, as they meet a couple more times over the next few years, uh, but uh, in different authorities over the rest of the time? I think the key thing is the continuity. I think people, uh, if they can meet together face-to-face, -face, they're great. But it's not always a case of actually uh, keeping that sort of continuity and that energy going when you're only meeting once or twice a year. And I think what you can actually do with an online community of practice is actually sort of keep that continuity going, ensure that there is some output from your face-to-face your -face meetings, and they actually you've, you've kept that somewhere, and you can use that an online environment to continue that collaboration and network. And for someone who's never touched an online community before, is there, is there one tip you, you give them to make sure they get the most out of that? Do not be frightened. It is really, really simple. Um, just feel that there's people out there on the other side of that uh, keyboard that is just as vulnerable as you. So I think the thing is, uh, well, if I was to give you any tip at all, do not be frightened about using the environment. There's people out there that are quite friendly. And one last question. These things working at their best, what do they achieve when you've got a good online community of practice? What, what's different about not having one and then having one? Um, I actually think that the, it's the, it's, again, it's the, the, the wisdom of crowds, if you like, the fact that actually you've, you've consolidated a huge yeah. amount of knowledge together in one place, and uh, once you've actually got a learning no, and a trusted and, uh, community working together, I think the output, the consolidated output, is bigger than the component parts. Thank you very much.